Hey, welcome to Barley and Hops. I'm George. I've got a great one again today. I hope I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open up a box that I ordered uh, through Brew House. Uh, it's the eight gallon the dual purpose pot reflux still that comes complete with everything you need. Uh, and we're going to show you that. I mean, I just think it's a really good one to do to show, you know, it comes out, bring out piece by piece and kind of describe everything. And we're actually going to put it together. Now, you can order these uh, through us. Uh, just give me a call or, or you can go to uh, brewhouse.com. Uh, you've got that on screen. Um, you, everything on their website is available through us or you can get it directly through their website. And I have no problems with that whatsoever. The only difference, is, the prices are the same. The only difference is, is if you order through us, well, you get me with it. Um, but if you have a problem in, in, associated with anything like it, you can always give us a call. We're going to ask. We're going to talk to you anyway. You know, you can tell a lot about a company, uh, about the way they package their products when they come to you. So this is really impressive. Uh, plus, I get to show you piece by piece how this comes. So this is the box that it comes in. It probably weighs about 30 pounds. I'm going to set this on the floor. And uh, I ordered the 8-gallon. Uh, of course, we have several of them, but I kept left this one in the box. This is the eight-gallon dual-purpose pot reflux, uh, which is the most common and the most popular uh, item that they sell through brew house and through barley and hops. Um, I ordered this one with the heater band, so that's in here as well. And I also said, hey, throw in the parrot. I want the parrot with it too. So the parrot's in here. Uh, yours may not come with that if you don't ask for it. Uh, but trust me, everything you ask for is going to be in the box, and you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised when you open this. The uh, I don't know. This is like being you know it's 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 Christmas almost every day here uh, as we open boxes and start to move things around and place them on the shelves and show folks what we've got to offer. Uh, it comes packed with all of these peanuts, and I wanted to show you this because this is uh, this is another interesting factoid that you can you can put in your book of factoids. Uh, these, they, they look like uh, Cheetos, um, the white ones. Uh, they're made out of cornstarch. So what you can do with these is if you take all of these out, because they go all over the place, if you take these and throw them into a, like a big mop sink and spray them with hot water, they'll disintegrate and go right down the drain. So that's one way of getting rid of them instead of trying to bag them up and throw them away in the trash and they go all over the yard and they go everywhere else. Uh, and I know someone out there is going to ask me, well, can you convert them to sugars and ferment them? Well, they're cornstarch. So uh, the answer to the question is yes. Uh, but I would always caution, you know, a, a lot of times your questions, the answer is always going to be yes. It's not can you, the really, should you? Uh, probably not. Uh, I'm not sure what these are made of other than cornstarch. Uh, so I know there's some other, probably some other byproducts in there. All right, we'll start pulling this out. So please be cautious and don't, don't distill that. Find yourself some some good medium, some good grain or something. You just use sugar. All right, first thing comes out is a box. This is a box of all of our accessories. I'm going to set that aside. Uh, and these things are packed really, really nicely. This is the clamp for the top. And we're going to place this on top of my uh, Jack Daniels uh, keg I've got sitting here. And like I told you, all of this stuff in here, they pack individually. And this is a portion of the column. Inside this column is where you'll also find, if you shake it, you'll also find the thermometer that goes in the top, and they've even separately wrapped that. Now remember, these are great, these are laboratory grade thermometers, they're really good, uh, and they're droppable once. So be very careful with those and set that aside. Okay, I'm going to set this as my middle pipe, I'll set that aside. Oh, there we go, there's the upper portion of the column that comes out of the box. And you'll notice how that's also wrapped separately, and they also use this saran wrap to cover up any of the ends so nothing can get inside, no dust or anything can get inside your column. So that's the upper portion of the column. Uh, then what you're going to have left in here, well, I already know it's here. There it is. There's my parrot. I asked for that parrot to be sent with it. And then, yep, I can feel it already. I, there it is. There's my 1500 watt heater band, and we'll show you how that works. Uh, and there's two ways you can use this, or well, actually three ways. <laughs> Excuse me. Once it goes around the outside of the pot and you, and you secure it, uh, 
you can either plug it straight into the wall and it's on. Uh, we have a controller. You can add a controller to it, so you can, it's like a potentiometer. You can turn it up or turn it down, you know, low, medium, high. Um, or you can go back to one of our other videos we did on the PID controllers, and you can control this through a PID controller. So let's place that aside. And now, this is our, the lid for our, pot, our kettle with a two-inch opening. Now remember, these do also come with a three-inch column. Uh, and if you've got the three inch column, of course, this would be a three inch opening on this end here. And of course, the columns would be a lot larger, which kind of begs a question now while I'm digging through the box. Uh, George, what's the difference between the two inch column and the three inch column? Well, one of the obvious differences is a three inch column. Yes, it's larger uh, in diameter, but it's the same size in height. The, the really the only difference between a three inch column and a two inch column is the amount of time it takes. It doesn't change the quality. It does not change the quantity of your distilled spirit. Uh, the only thing it changes is the time because if you go from a two inch to a three inch column, you actually increase the surface, you know, pi r squared by 2.44. 2.44 times the uh, surface area inside. So it gives that vapor a lot more room to travel up that column so therefore, things happen a little bit quicker. So as an example, the two inch column will produce, oh, probably about a quart and a half, a quart, quart and a half or so per hour at a really good pace. And the three inch column is gonna do about two quarts an hour, or maybe a little bit more. So that's the only difference in it really is time. And it's a, l a bigger looking column. This thing comes in a plastic, this is the eight gallon kettle. And it comes in a plastic uh, bag, and it's also filled with all of these little packaging peanuts, as you might want to call them. So you want to dump those out, and be careful because there's stuff inside. This comes with a bag of copper, copper mesh, and that's 30 feet of copper mesh. Uh, it rolls out. Uh, you only need about 30 inches, 36 inches or so, two pieces for your still and the rest of it you save for later on. This stuff is reusable, so it'll last you a long, it'll last you almost a lifetime. It comes with the water control system, and we're gonna show you how to hook that up. That's really simple. It appears to be simple anyway. And then we reach around here and see if there's, and there's nothing else in there, so we're gonna open the bag, dump out all of these peanuts, and in a few seconds here, oh, I'm gonna reach in the bottom of that bag and we're gonna pull out the diffuser plate that goes in the bottom. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to save all these peanuts. So I'll be back with you in a second as I dump out all of these kernels, all of these uh, packaging peanuts. And no, I'm not gonna save them to distill. Uh, I'll use them when I start packaging other products that we ship out. It just, just kind of makes sense. So if you get these and you get them from me, uh, I got them from Brew House. Uh, yeah, it just seems just like no matter minutes. how um, careful you try to be, they still go all over the floor. Uh, don't fret. But oh, here we go. We're all the way down the bottom. And it comes with this diffuser plate that's also wrapped. So and the diffuser plate goes on top of your propane or your heating source if you're going to use flame. And what it does, it, it actually diffuses the heat across this plate that you place the kettle on top of so that it kind of prevents scorching inside the pot. Uh, some people use them, some put them on the shelf and, and they don't use them. If you're gonna use a band heater or uh, a hot plate, uh, this is probably not as necessary. Uh, if you're gonna use a really good hot plate or something like that, you might wanna use it anyway. But uh, if you're gonna use the outside band heater, it, it's probably not necessary to use this. But it comes in handy if you're gonna put it on top of a turkey fryer. So we'll set that aside, and well, I still got about a half a box of these uh, peanuts in here. I'm just going to set this aside, and we'll get to this later. But this is the still as it comes to you, and let's start uh, let's start putting this thing together. The first thing we'll do is we'll put the lid on. And the lid comes with this uh, with this rubber seal. And this gasket is really really durable. And we have not had one fail yet. And then your the clamp that goes around the outside. And 
You know, on these, as opposed to uh, your some of your copper models, if you have a copper steel, you know you always have to mix that paste up and you know, you're going around and you're trying to find all your connections and you're trying to seal them to make sure that it doesn't leak. Well, with one of these, a stainless steel pot, you don't have to worry about that because you cinch this down and you cinch this down thumb tight. Uh, it seals itself and you don't have to worry about putting any paste around it. So you've got a, a sealed complete system. Now, uh, as you tighten this down, you get it nice and snug. Stop right there, please. Uh, don't use a pair of pliers to try to get it real. It doesn't have to be, just, just got to be finger tight, uh, nice and snug. Uh, and if, you might want to put some WD-40 on there if, if you absolutely need it. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this box of goodies that come with it. Because uh, in, in our box of goodies are the other associated things that we need to put this together. And they package this up very well. And the first thing we have is that 560 gallon per hour pump. And this is that amazing pump that we drop in, the, uh, in a bucket of ice water. And we use this pump to pump water up to our column. And that's just used for cooling. So I'll set that aside. We have the, both of the two inch tri-clamps that are going to clamp the column to our still. And these are really high grade stainless steel so you can tell about the quality of these ones as soon as you open them up and start playing with it. It also comes with the, the two clear see-through uh, gaskets that go on the column. Now, and I get this call all the time. They've also included this small black ring. And you'll see this black O-ring in your box uh, when you pull it out. And th there's no, it, it doesn't tell you anywhere in here where this goes. This O-ring is made specifically, and it's just an, an added piece that brew house throws in for you. <laughs> if you have an old beer keg, uh, your neighbor gets a beer, a keg of beer, and he empties a keg of beer, and it sits out on his yard for months and months and months, and you just say, hey, let me have that keg. Uh, he probably paid $50 deposit on the keg, so he's lost his money, but... He might even give you the keg. Now this could be the eight gallon keg, a 16 gallon, it, whatever, just a standard keg. Because all standard kegs in the US have a two inch, have a two inch top on them, access point. Now, they may be a little bit difficult to clean because you can't get the top off of a keg, but you can get the center part out. Uh, there's another video on that, on how to remove that center part. But what's interesting is that you can take your column, if you put that black O-ring on there, and place that black o-ring and that column on top of that keg your two inch dry clamp will attach it to a beer keg so you can have another still the only challenge again is in the the, the, the keg will work fine especially the first time through but cleaning that sucker is really really difficult because it's hard to get inside there and kind of wash it out and scrub it out because you've got that one small hole so that's what that black o-ring is for so don't worry if you've got an o-ring <laughs> just you can set it aside or just hang it in the garage somewhere because you'll never know the day that someone's going to bring in you've got the eight gallon model someone may bring a 15 gallon keg to you a beer keg there you go all right what else is in here is or are a couple of other items one of them are the clamps and then this hose barb uh, this hose barb is also an, an added feature that uh, you can hook this to your hose and hook the hose to it and hook that straight to your column as well if you're not really worried about water conservation. Uh, and then all these clamps. And these clamps are wonderful because they seal off all the hoses that are going on to your still. And then, of course, the bung. Last but not least. And this bung goes in the very top, goes into the very top of your column and your thermometer goes in that. And the reason you put it at the top is because it, this is the head. Head temperature is the most important. That's what we track in order to process. Now, one other piece they added in here is a piece of chemical resistant hose. Now, this chemical resistant hose, it's quite a bit of it, so you'll have plenty. Uh, this chemical resistant hose goes from the end of your condenser so that when your spirits are starting to trickle out, 
Uh, you don't have to actually have the pot or your collection jar right here. You can put it anywhere you want. But make sure you use a chemical resistant hose. If you use a regular hose, uh, the regular see-through hose, plastic hoses, unless it's chemical resistant, that spirit that comes out of there is so strong, uh, it'll start to strip some of those, some of that plastic uh, from within inside. Uh, and, and you'll notice it, you'll look at your jar and you'll go, where's all these little white flakes coming from? And, they're, and they'll be in different levels. They're, they're kind of floating around all by themselves. And it, well, it's, that's where it comes from. Uh, make sure you use a chemical resistant hose instead of your uh, regular standard hose. All right. And last but not least, the last thing that comes in the box are all your hose connections. And these are the connections, these small pieces of hose are the connections for the reflux. And then these large ones, the two large are probably about six or eight foot long. These are your two hoses for water in, water out. Uh, the hose is relatively cheap. It's half inch diameter, inside, inside diameter, half inch. So you can get this hose just about anywhere if you need extra additional hose. Well, that does it for that part. Now, it's going to take me a few more, a few extra minutes. It's going to take me a few extra minutes, so I'm going to do that and then I'll come back with you. But it's going to be a few extra minutes to, to remove all of this packing that's on here. And then we're going to put this still together and I'll just show you what it looks like when we're finished. But I'll be back shortly.